basically, Mohammed Ali Sikha you kindly tell us um, how did you um, decide? Why didn't you go into another profession? Why did you decide to go into journalism after having done uh, your MA Urdu? Or shall we say your process of thought process which went through your mind even during your education stage uh, as to were you thinking of some other profession or you had decided from the very beginning to go on to writing and journalism or whatever? And Mr. Sir, I think uh, it happened so that I was in CMS school right from the 8th class and this school as all of us know is an English medium school possibly one of one of three English medium schools in Karachi which one uh, CMS CMS uh, uh, CMS school and this is the same school in which Qaeda Azam Alhamdulillah was also educated and he did his matriculation you know. Sin Madrasa yeah right. no no you know that he joined Sin Madrasa mm -hmm. but he did his matriculation from CMS I see and there is a big I think controversy going on in Karachi whether he passed out his matriculation from CMS or Sin Madarsa, but now it has been settled in favor of CMS. Mm -hmm. And the whole atmosphere in Amroha was such that you couldn't escape being a poet. Even if you are not, they would draft you. They draft <laughs> <laughs> They would just yeah. give you the ghazals and say, please recite. recite. So that was the type of atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So I started off as a poet, but uh, I think uh, I should make it clear that it was not very good poetry. And I realized very early on that <laughs> I won't continue as a poet. Bain altercation in the early 60s was, was against Iftikhar Jali, Ben Ismagi and the votaries of new school. So I was dubbed as a traditionalist because they couldn't think that anyone who happens to be a modern uh, should be coming out in defense of Ghazal. Because mm -hmm. I said Ghazal is, uh, is uh, something which uh, we can't uh, do away with because uh, Ghazal has, uh, you know, a very inherent flex flexibility and elasticity to embrace all the themes which, which could occur to a mind, to, to a thinking mind. Mm. And I think some of our modern Urdu Ghazal poets have proved that the confidence which was reposed in them was not altogether wrong and they have brought a new world in Ghazal. Uh, you know, they are just trying to use Ghazal as if it, it, it's a poem, you know. And we have some sustained Ghazal, Ghazal in the sense that right from the first couplet to the last, it's a unity in theme as well. Slight variations in moods. Yeah. Especially getting, in the modern world. Didn't it always modern exist? Uh, in Ghalid, for example. You know, some of them, I think it didn't exist as a very conscious uh, attempt. Some of our Ustas have done that. But they did it, I think, out of uh, sheer um, demand of the time. But uh, Nasir Kazmi, to me, is the first modern Urdu poet who used it as a technique as, as well. You know, because he was so much enamored of the fact that Ghazali yeah. Uh, should be retained and Ghazal shouldn't die out. So he came out with all the accusations against Ghazal and he, uh, I think, gave it a new meaning, you know, a new, I think, uh, sense of contemporary thinking. And therefore you would see that there are some Ghazals mm -hmm. uh, which just uh, pick you up from a particular wavelength mm -hmm. of his mood and then you are traveling on the wavelength and he he is not found making any departure. So it's just one mood. He's coming. One thing I would just is with reference to the Nasser Kazmi, you said there was a continuity of uh, thought in his ghazal as a technique. Mm -hmm. well, if you remember, it's the uh, Pehli Barish. Mm -hmm. the, he, he introduced a new experience, experience in Urdu ghazal mm -hmm. that the whole book yes. starts with ghazal mm -hmm. and with one radif and one kafia. Suraj Nange Paon Khala Tha and this is the whole every ghazal with, with, in the same rhythm and everything <coughs> and I think the whole book has a continuity of, of uh, theme Yes, because uh, nostalgia was the keynote of uh, Nasir Kazmi's poetry and he along with Majid Amjad and uh, Munir Niazi and Amir Mustaq and uh, Sajjad Bakar Rizvi and Salim Rahman and my friend Suhail Ahmed Khan, you know, the, it's a very interesting group. Even Hanif Rame joined it, you know, Ijaz Batalvi as well. So this is the group which which wanted to be modern, at the same time wanted to subscribe to, to, to Ghazal, because they thought that uh, Ghazal is uh, uh, our main architecture, you know, in words. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it, it just encompasses our spirit yeah. and our spiritual yearning. 
So I actually, think, uh, I'm, uh, Anusha, uh, like since he's talking about ghazal, mm. so in his particular form of a poetry, I think it will be interesting if we'll, uh, if you'll we'll ask him about the what is his opinion about the prose poem? How can we accept? Yes, accept that it is causing a lot of form of <laughs> heated <laughs> discussion. Last time yeah. when Kishwar Nahid came, mm. yeah. oh, I think they spent hours and hours uh, on discussing. Yes, I yes. Think. And we had immense hostility <laughs> towards it, and yeah, some let's people. Let's hear your thoughts on that yeah. too. Yes, yeah. 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 I think that before coming over to the prose poem, I would like. To and rather tell in brief that Pakistan has been having a very different tradition right from its inception. Lahore being the center of Urdu literature, and Lahore being just like Wales and Ireland and Scotland to England, you know. So they are not tradition bound to start with. Therefore, when they took Ghazal, they changed Ghazal. When they took Nazam, they changed Nazam. When when they when they thought over prose poem, they meditated for a for a while, mm-hmm. and it still it is receiving a lot of resistance in Punjab, especially by Dr. Vaziraga and, and his group. I think that uh, it is not uh, it's not a bad idea to try uh, every possible form, mm-hmm. provided your adoption of the form justifies your your decision. You know, if you think that you shouldn't be restricted and you should be having an unhindered flow of feelings. Then it's all right. Uh, prose in Pakistan, and, and uh, Ashwaf knows it very well because he was there and part of the scene. Actually, what happened? In our country, there were some, some writers who took up the cause of prose poem as if it was a religion. And they came out with the idea that you can't write poetry uh, except in Ghazal. Uh, and they and they thought that all the classical forms should be thrown into the river Indus mm-hmm. or river Ganges, whatever <laughs> be the position. <laughs> and they they just wanted that uh, prose poem uh, should be adopted as as a form because it's very natural. It gives you a lot of independence, and uh, you can be yourself. Because they thought that all the Ghazal poets have not been very genuine <coughs> communicators because they have been so much uh, rather hide bound, you know, with Radif and Kafia, mm-hmm. that they had to compromise a lot. Mm-hmm. So they say it's not natural. But in Pakistan, we have still to see uh, this uh, new jina take its roots. So, and therefore, I think those who were not very good at Ghazal and couldn't have the fighting chance of being good at Nazam as well, they adopted prose poem out of convenience. So it was the whole thing as if the prose poem is versus Ghazal. I think mm-hmm. this is not the case. Mm-hmm. Against the Ghazal, the first section came in uh, uh, under, the, under the leadership of Hali and in, 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 in Punjab, and they were asking for Nazm. Mm-hmm. The prose poem case, I think it's a something, they are even uh, uh, against the uh, Azad Nazm. They are even against the um, uh, no, pro, uh, Trivaiti Nazm. Mm-hmm. And they are not saying that it's against Ghazal or against thing. I think, is there you no know, some sort of ideology involved in this uh, prose poem group? No, oh, yes. I think uh, it's a very relevant point because in Pakistan we will be guided by the events which overtook us. And I'm not to, in any way comparing events in India. I think in Pakistan it was thought that all the progressive poets have used Ghazal. Uh, and I think as best as they could, and they have used Nazam as best as they could. So they thought that they were thriving in, in you know, uh, Paband as well as Azad poetry. So they came out with prose poem because prose poem had got some ideological undertones as well. They thought that only the ones who are modern, and when they said modern, they believed that modern is one who believes in a state of withdrawal because this status quo is not worth. Uh, aspiring far and they were so hell-bent on, on doing away with the status quo that they thought that first they should start with the language itself. And they came out with a very funny formulation that we should do away with the conventional language. Because conventional li- language was, uh, you know, uh, declared to be a reflection of the conventional society. So they say, I think they said that if a society is conventional, a traditional, it would be used in traditional forms. If society is modern, it should not be using traditional forms. So they assume for themselves that Pakistan has to be a modern country, and since it has to be a modern country, we should do away with the classical poetry. So, uh, what are the representative works of fiction, uh, in your opinion, which can be called in outstanding? Even the modern, uh, or modern, young, or modern, yes, in the last 20 years. In the last 20 years, in I your think, opinion, uh, I think. Uh, Abdullah Hussain, Intadar Hussain, Anwar Sajjad, even Khadija Mastur, and uh, 
Uh, but these are the old ones. Who are the no? You know that you know that came in seventy. You, you know that most most writers who have flowered and blossomed in the last two decades are the writers who who are now in their fifties. Yes. Yeah. Or in their late forties, you know. Mm. So you can't divide the line. Mm. But I think that we have had quite a few. Uh, novels from Abdullah, uh, no, Abdullah Hussain and Zahra Hussain and Anis uh, Nagi. Anis Nagi has come out with a novel, uh, Diwar Ke Piche. Diwar Ke Piche. It's one of the best novels written in Urdu. Yeah. Abdullah Hussain Bagh, yeah, it's very good, soon after. Uh, you know, after Das Nasle. Uh, not soon after, but he also wrote Kashkol, which is a novelette. Hmm. So we see that Zahr has also come out with Basti. And we see that Khadija Mastur has also come out. It's a post thumb, you know, post hmm. Zameen. And we see now that uh, there are some fiction writers, and if you just uh, uh, study the collections of short stories, I think the last decade has um, has proved that Urdu writers are now turning to prose, creative prose. And uh, I think the latest work uh, which has surprised me uh, is the you know is a compendium of short stories brought out by Ijaz Rahi. It is, mm-hmm. I think, it's Gawahi. called Gawahi, mm-hmm. and you would, uh, and, and Ahmed Dawood, Masrul Islam, Manshayad, and uh, Dushman Dar Admi, Admi, and yeah. uh, the first was uh, uh, Maftu Hamai. So we see that uh, it's quite a virile scene in fiction mm-hmm. these days. And uh, about the prose, mm-hmm. so I would like then Bellar is also looking your Nishanat and Tabazun. Mm-hmm. As Tabazun was published in 1976 and this is in 1981, mm-hmm. so there's a five years gap. Mm-hmm. How do you feel when you brought the second book? Is do you uh, feel that there is a, some Can change in something? your stands or uh, no change at all? Or I think how do you feel? I mean, you're feeling. <laughs> no, I think it's a very relevant question. I think uh, Tabazun. I was quite lucky and I think my readers were very indulgent. Mm. This is the book which became the best seller. I mean, yeah. Now you can't find any copy in the bazaar. Is and that so? This is the book yeah, which has been prescribed by many Indian universities. Uh, yes, no. This has also been published in India along with Process mm. I think this book uh, is a testament, uh, you know, uh, mm. because I just wanted to effect a blend between two diverse. Uh, strengths, mm-hmm. the traditional and the anarchist, the traditional and the narcissist, traditional and the, the avant-garde type of mm-hmm. criticism. I think that unless uh, we realize that uh, it takes all manner of people to make this world, it takes all manner of writers to to fill the scene of literature. Therefore, uh, Tawazun created quite a, a spate of discussions, you know. Mm-hmm. I have been very lucky that I have been much criticized. <laughs> and, uh, you know, in the sense well, criticism that, is a privilege, uh, actually. But mm. but but I Both think way. that uh, th- this this has been a trend-setting book, mm. and even our senior progressive writers conceded that this is a departure from their own line. Mm. And even Salim Ahmed was, uh, you know, mm. uh, on the TV commenting on this book, and mm. you know that uh, I differ um, with him on, mm. on on many points. So I think that now uh, the main. Mm, Rather, I think the mood point in our criticism is whether we should be formalist or be more, uh, you know, uh, rather concerned with the content. So the content is now winning the war. So it's no more the form which used to, you know, rule uh, with some of our young poets. So now it's the content as well. And when I said Shais the Habib, uh, I just wanted to introduce this young lady from Lahore because she has used prose poem the way it ought to be. And Kishwar Naik, I think the whole battle is that the poetry is so much, so pregnant with words, with, with, with meanings. With thought and meaning. With, with thought, you, that, that you would see almost that as if it is uh, a big discussion going on, you know, mm-hmm. as to how the society should behave towards individuals, as to how the individual should try to, to understand the social changes. So now I think, uh, um, since 1976, I think uh, we had to fight for for Ghazal, uh, and the fight was very much in the air. But Ghazal uh, now stands vindicated, 
and then we came to the discussion of linguistics because linguistic analysis has become a very important part of our criticism and this was a very dangerous move they wanted to throw throw out you know to throw into the junk all the conventional uh, works in literature mm-hmm. so now it's once again a resurgence um, i think for the for the conventional language they think that if you are bright and if if you have to offer some new images and if you have to innovate and if you have to and offer uh, your experience you can do it within the framework of conventional language so i think that this has been a very fruitful period in our criticism in the sense that now some some things have been once again established as uh, worth retaining you know mm. so ram babu saxena's book mm. we have dr sadik's book we have nazis books mm. uh, in english it's a very small book by jm nazis and uh, also the but i think that i wanted to interpret literature from the view point of someone who would like to see the march of literature according to his own um, vision so you can label me uh, with the tag of being prejudiced in favor of a particular movement but i think that what our writers have done so far they were heavily tilted towards classical and traditional mm. poetry so they now dr sadik is a modern of course but he is not even uh, he has not tried to grapple with the with the modern uh, and the poets and the modern movements so his book uh, of urdu literature is also very uh, wanting in this particular department i would be in- interpreting in the book which is about to be published uh, the modern urdu literature as i would like to see it from the standpoint of someone i would like to see whether literature has been sensitive to the movement for social change now all those works which according to me have have tried to come to grips with this question would be commented upon but i won't be leaving out those works as well which which uh, are clashing with 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 my view point mm. because it's only when i you know I uh, discuss my what should I say uh, favorite theme in the background of the dissenting parallel mm. uh, because you you can't make out anything if i'm just coming out with my own interpretation i would like to treat my adversaries in the field with as much respect and uh, uh, attention as i would discussing those who who are really doing Uh, I have one sorry. thing. Will this book be helpful for the people who are really not involved in the Urdu literature, like this in English? Can we, uh, an, a reader, will find an interest, like who who doesn't know anything about Urdu language or literature? Yes, yes. I think uh, the first chapter is about the Urdu language itself. Mm-hmm. I have discussed all the possible theories as to how this language came into being. I have contended in my article, you know, in in my first chapter that Urdu. is the development in the you know it's a subcontinental development and i would like to go to to the theory that it's an offshoot of pali so i don't subscribe to the notion that urdu is an indo aryan language mm-hmm. i think it's it's very very old because all of all the verbs in urdu are pali words and we have so much in common with hindi actually that uh, the 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 two names given to one language in hindustani urdu and hindustani i think this has been been a very unfortunate development in the subcontinent and the british did it because they didn't want uh, to see the flowering of a common language having two different scripts they thought that since the scripts were different the language would also be made different mm-hmm. so they did all they could to uh, to rather precipitate its uh, separation create, to create a gulf mm-hmm. otherwise you know a poet like ghalib uh, doesn't feel shy in calling himself a poet of hindi a poet like musafi doesn't feel shy in calling himself a poet of hindi actually his taskara is taskara hindi goya mm-hmm. and ghalib uh, all the time says that he is a hindi poet now what happened the fort william college uh, at calcutta the, i think it was established for the for the bureaucrats civil and military Uh, the british bureaucrats who used to serve india and it was at the fort william college that the basis for the cleavage for the gulf was was created you know mm-hmm. and they uh, made some hindu writers believe that yours is a different language i think urdu is slightly older than hindi in one sense 
because if we look back uh, we would find that so many Hindu writers have been composing literature in the uh, Urdu script, in Urdu script mm -hmm. and they regarded it as Hindustani. Even Mahatma Gandhi is on record having said that Hindustani is one language, Urdu and uh, Hindi are the two, two, two I think two names, names. Two, two names. Uh, in the same language. Uh, yes, given in recognition of the scripts, the particular scripts. So I think it's not a bad idea. But if you are an Urdu writer, then you will have to be using, um, uh, a, you know, a fair percentage of Persian Arabic words. If you are a Hindi writer, then you'll be using a, a fair percentage of Sanskrit words. Uh -huh. And with the with, with the times, you know, this cleavage deepened itself, and it, and it has deepened itself to such an extent that now I think the Hindi is becoming slightly different from mm. Urdu. Mm. And uh, the fact of partition has led to um, the belief, you know, that now after 50 years I don't see these two languages would... No, um, can we I don't think so, you see, for the simple reason that... Because now the cleavage is deepening. Even there is a geographical cleavage now, you see, and yes. slowly and slowly this generation which was... And, and, and I think... So yeah, Mumbai, sir, the, since we are talking about this Urdu in uh, India and Pakistan, I think it's the uh, second trip uh, you are in, uh, in North America. Yeah. And it's, uh, would you give us your opinion about... <laughs> Um, oh, how do you feel about the Urdu community and well, the future, of, future of Urdu here? <laughs> not future, I mean, no, I think Urdu, Urdu community is not the description. I think that all those people who have migrated from the subcontinent, they would they would have to love two circles. One one is their mother tongue, and the other circle which which brings them closer to other groups has to be Urdu, you know, because Urdu is the logical movement. When 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 you are not in your family and you don't speak Urdu, is your mother tongue. The, the moment you go out, you step out of the circle, you, you, you have to speak a language which is commonly understood. And this is, once I was talking to Baba Urdu, Maulvi Abdul Haqsaab, and I said, what makes this language, uh, you know, so, so acceptable to, to people of different regions? It says, because it doesn't insist on its locale. Mm -hmm. And if someone is and able to prove that it was born in Timbuktu, I would buy the idea because it's worth having. <laughs> we have heard from him how he got into journalism, but we haven't heard from him how he got into Urdu criticism. Yeah, I think... Uh, it's the most yeah. very important. Uh, I think my first article is in Hamara Adab or Qawmi Dimaag. It was published in Jamino in 1959. 1959. Yes, I mentioned the year here. What was it on? Uh, so that was your name of your article? Yeah. I it yes, was the name it was written under this caption. I see. So now you can very well, I think, visualize what were my preferences. I wanted to search, I wanted to make a probe, actually. And you know that what, what are the elements which constitute our mind? Tell me one thing. What How is the national mind? Mm. That is a very important. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know, you may be a Muslim or a Hindu or a Christian mm. or a Sikh, but the question arises, it is on the basis of your ethnic, uh, um, I think, identity that I should trace your mind, or it, it is your geographical, mm -hmm. uh, I think, uh, uh, area, yes, origin, which should uh, be giving me some idea of your mind. I think what I have tried to struggle in that first piece written in 59, now it is 25 years. So, there are to be a silver jubilee, I think. Is there? <laughs> 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 no, because it is a search which is still but is still it still available going on. in a book form? Hmm? Yeah. Is it available in a book form? Mm, yes, it is in Tawazan. It is in Tawazan. You must have written hundreds of articles. Why aren't they in book form? Twelve hundred. Uh, yes. <laughs> Why aren't they in, all in, in book form? In English, forms? I think uh, they are... They are uh, Thousands now. Twelve, hmm. twelve, I think hundred articles. They are including the literature. leader and the columns, are they? Or the yes, you know, they are articles. You know, that, that my columns have to be, I should say, in the form of articles. But why are and, they? And, and my studies of Sindhi literature, Sraiki literature, Kashmiri literature, Punjabi literature, Pashto literature, the northern languages, you know, which are uh, Shina and uh, other languages, Pakistan abounds in dialects and languages. So I think I'm very fortunate in, in having been provided opportunity to study the regional de uh, literature. And it's on the basis of my, of, uh, and, and my book, An Overview of Pakistan Literature, is not uh, about Urdu literature only. 
It's about all the Pakistani languages. I no, see. but he wants to. Uh, uh, but that's mm. my question is, is: Why are you not getting your articles printed in a book form? You know, it's very difficult. It's very difficult because these three books I know that uh, it's very difficult to get a book published in Pakistan. You may be having. Uh, I heard that the book which sells fastest. Is a book written on criticism. Yes, uh, you you are you are very right, but it it it, it I think requires a fortune now to come out with a book, and even our very big names, Dr. Hassan Raipuri and Majnu Gurapuri and Hussain, they have got, I believe, quite a few scripts, okay. quite a few manuscripts so with them. To print it. But it's very difficult to. Yeah. So I think if I compile my articles on Sindhi literature and other. I think I can give you 12 books in English right now without doing do anything. Coming back to your question, Ashwak, I think uh, we are very much concerned about your, you know, concern to 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 keep your identity uh, intact. I think uh, you are you are already on a losing battle. You can't retain your identity in the Western setting. So anyone who who comes here has to have the love for his language or her language. Only in the first generation. It's it's the first generation's last, you know, um, stand, right? stand. Last stand, <laughs> and this is the stand which I very very well. But it is very very I think commendable that at least you are you are trying to confuse your children <laughs> with, with, with with the language <laughs> no, of languages, you know, <laughs> because the the more they they hear, I think in, Urdu words uh, in Urdu or, 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 or I think other languages from their parents, the more they are going to. To 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 meditate, uh, which language should be kept and how? Because uh, Canada cannot provide you uh, any opportunity for the transmission of your values. You know they have their own system of education, and this is looking after the transmission of the Western legacy mm -hmm. to the Canadian and American children, and they are doing it very well. But if you want to inculcate the love for the language, I think you would have to operate the ways. The way the Jews operated, mm -hmm. because they they have resurrected mm -hmm. a dead language, a dead language, and now it's very, you know, it's now alive. I think uh, the vocabulary is also going to thin down, you know, with the mm -hmm. passage of time. So I think uh, I have been to many homes in Canada, and wonderful friends they are. I think second generation Canadians mm -hmm. uh, uh, will be having a lot of difficulty in retaining their language. But koi akhri sawal less. Ask the last question in Urdu. Question, no, no, question in English because the yeah. time is running out. So, anything which you think is worth recording, anything. Now you deliberate. <laughs> <laughs> when are you coming here next? Huh? When are you coming here next? Uh, Any time when friends like you will invite me. Yeah. Uh, but I have my plans. Maybe, You're most welcome. Next maybe, July. maybe I'm coming to you know, and I will be coming to London in, yeah. in July next. So Canada won't be very far away from London. <laughs> <laughs> but I 